the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you mightily choosing us. Thank you for your love. And thank you for your Son, whom you sent all that love you had for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, who is dwelling inside us. And I thank you for all these, my sisters, who have joined here to raise a hallelujah in the middle of the storms, in the middle of all that they are going through. They are here to fellowship with you and raise a mighty hallelujah. Because the hunger and thirst that we all have for you brought us here. Because our king is alive. And we have to know the king. We are here to know our king. Lord, we thank you for everyone who is was, was going to listen to this session later. All the blessings be showered upon our sister Melanie, who's going to speak today in your name. Every word that comes out of your mouth belongs to you. What you don't want us to hear, let it not be heard from her. Let every word be preciously delivered, Lord. Thank you for each one of us are created eagles. We are created mighty women. We are created to prosper. We are created, created to deliver your word to every place, every corner that we exist. Lord, because when people see us, it's no longer us that live, but they see Christ. Thank you. Thank you once again, Lord. I surrender this very moment. I bind and cast every spirit that is going to distract us that will come as a distraction in the internet, in everything, no matter what. We bind and cast everything. And we hear openly with open heart, with the open ears, we are here to receive your word. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise amen. Jesus. Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Okay, have we brought any testimonies today? Do we have anything to share? Praise God. Praise Jesus. So you know, I this this is not a small session. We go we go through this throughout. So now I deal with my little boys, okay? And last night, this boys came and the older one started screaming from nowhere. I don't know, at nine o'clock, he was crying for what? And I couldn't control him and he was just crying. And I said, in Jesus' name, whatever spirit is bothering my boy now, in Jesus' name, you just have to leave him right now. And I command you, never even think of this child again. This child belongs to Jesus. And so I, I wasn't annoyed or anything because, you know, sometimes you just can't deal with that. But yeah, it you know, didn't even take five minutes for the child to calm down. To And then he just, you know, I could carry him and he stopped crying altogether. Then I started with my stories and whatever. But this is where we are, you know. He it, it just annoys us when they cry and it's just so bad and you just can't stop. But see, that's not from God, you know. And when I realized it's the spirit, now it's it's everything makes sense to me. And you realize it's the evil spirit. It's not come to stay. He, I, I have got that authority just to cast it away. You know, no matter what, which way he comes. So yeah, I thought I will I will share it because it's it's very simple in simple ways, but then it just gives us peace, just like it just calmed me down too, you know. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so anyone else? Maria, it is not simple. Actually, it is, you know, it's a daily life, you know, our our faith building in our daily life, you know. 
this is where we are uh, we are practicing what we hear and our faith yeah you know, that's invisible you know nirmala the thing is i think they came from a from a beach they went on a beach you know and it was a bit late they came to my house at about 8:30 or something i had to shower him the little one was okay but then i something told me no 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 something is not right you know he got out of the car and he was screaming non stop and that's not like him something very weird and yeah so i thought oh because you know the spirit we pray for the spirits about yeah, the the ocean. under the water yeah. you know so i was reminded of that and and they cast yeah. it now and it just worked praise yeah. god just that thing night reminded me also the same hmm. the beach on the beach yeah praise god thank you jesus thank you and you know in the end it's the holy spirit who is our reminder he's our teacher he's our counselor he is leading us he's teaching us he is talking to us and guiding us showing us the way you know so and maria <laughs> this knowledge you got from god if it was for some in an ordinary time an ordinary moment which you had not you had not studied the word of god or you had not this knowledge you had been still struggling thinking what happened with the child Yes. Why is he crying? No, I'm gone crazy. And I would have shouted at him more than he was yeah. crying. True, true. <laughs> yeah, and you know he really calmed down. Then he ate his food peacefully, no problem. So yeah, it was just so wonderful. Praise God. I do the same, Maria. Even when dogs and monkeys are fighting, you know, far away, I hear them. You know, sometimes you hear the dogs all together barking and howling at each other. I immediately cast them out. You know, and it works wonderfully. In minutes, they're all silent. Believe me, it's not just child. So when I'm going on the road of, I'm going anywhere, I see few people standing and fighting for something. I immediately cast the spirit of strife from there. You know, and they all disperse right in front of my eyes. It works wonderfully, actually. You know, Praise this is God. a beautiful, powerful weapon we have got that God has given us. Yes, and you know, beautiful creatures God has created to live in peace and harmony. Wow. It's all against the world. You know, the peace. Wherever we say unrest, it's not God's work for them. So we know, we understand whose work is this. So when you chase that person, that is good. Yes. Power out of that, automatically God sees something over there. You know, because God is yes. in the universe to live in. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, anyone else? Praise the Lord, oh, sister. I have a te small testimony. Oh, praise ahead, my Lord. darling. <laughs> praise the Lord. So about 15 months ago, um, I had bought a new washing machine for my apartment. Now, um, about two months after I bought it, um, I noticed really deep scratches on the inside of the, of the glass door, which it's it's not normal. And um, now I, I basically, I held off on contact. I just kept procrastinating on it um, and I didn't contact the company I'd say for about another three months after that so that would be five months after I bought it now the shop said that they would contact the manufacturer but they didn't think that they'd do anything about it because I'd waited too long to contact them now I kind of I let it I kind of let it go. I just kind of pop into my mind every so often going I really must follow up on that but then um, I would think Realist, realistically um part of the chances and um now i the 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 manager of the, the i suppose the customer relations manager of the store had been very curt on the phone with me so i just keep blessing her and he's saying the mm -hmm. spirit of the lord is upon the situation the spirit of the lord is upon the the manager and and the favor of god is upon me and all the other customers and um so again, it kind of kept up into my mind, but there were so many other things to do that I just kind of let it slide. Now, before Christmas of this year, so this is over a year since um, the issue had happened, um, I felt strongly led to just go into the store and talk to the manager in person rather than contacting her by phone or by email because she hadn't responded to my last email. And um, so I spoke to her anyway and she said, oh, yeah, the company came back to me, said that you waited too long. Now, I'd never she'd never come back to me to to, to give me any update on it. Um, but I kept blessing her um, all along. And she said that there was nothing that they could do. Um, and I just 
didn't react in my mind of thinking going, well Holy Spirit I've already said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon this situation and the favor mm. of God is upon me so if if you're you're in this situation this is what she's telling me I'm just not going to react I'm just going to bless her and um kind of under my breath is going to thank you Jesus for blessing X name and um then I just oh yeah so the Holy Spirit had reminded me at that point to walk in love with her and then I just mentioned to happen to mention another issue to her with the with the spin basically on the washing machine. So she sent me over to a colleague of hers and um, I mentioned both the issues to him then. And he said he said that neither of them sounded normal. And he went back to the manager and he asked her to set up an appointment with an engineer to come out and look at it. And so I was like, praise the Lord. I oh, didn't react. Yes. So the Holy Spirit could work in the situation. Yeah. And. So basically, an engineer was scheduled for last Wednesday week. And the day beforehand, I ended up getting an emergency dental appointment for the that day. And I contacted the company and said, oh, the engineer will contact you in the morning with a time frame that he will be out between. And of course, the, the time frame was exactly in the middle of when my dental appointment was going to be on. So I just contacted the, the company thinking that they would just give me another day that the engineer would come out um like I wasn't putting any pressure at all and they basically phoned the engineer got him to drive a half an hour from where he was to my apartment and then drive a half an hour back to look at my my machine basically uh so that I could go to my emergency dental appointment so (laughs) he basically he arrived at the door um and I uh and he was seen he he explained what had happened that they they the company put a lot of pressure on him to come and I said well oh. in, I'm very sorry about that because the pressure wasn't from me at all I was more top of my list was the dental appointment as opposed to the washing machine uh, so basically he looked at he looked at the door as well and he just said oh that's not normal no that's not normal and he said I think that the issue with the glass is causing the issue with the spin so I'll just replace the door for you and I said. And will there be any charge for that? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. There's no ex- oh. no charge for that. <laughs> so basically, he's ordered the, the door and he's bringing the new door next week. And this is such a, I just, I was so, I was just praising the Lord. The minute she said to me, I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and he oh. was looking at me, okay. Um, God is so good. So even when we sit, like sit on things and just kind of, as in nothing is impossible for him in my mind the little fellow kept telling me oh it's too late do the way there's no way and the old Suzanne would have written a, a huge big list of the facts and and outlined the complaint and and raised the issue and es- had the issue escalated to the complaints department and xyz whereas I just kept saying thank you Jesus the spirit of the Lord is upon this situation and the favor of God is upon me and the other customers uh praise the Lord so thank you Jesus he's so good Nothing is too small or, or too. No. Everything is so beautiful, and he makes it beautifully too. And he perfects. <laughs> all, he perfects all that which concerns us. Yeah. You know, all this remember um, from the book of Genesis, when Sarah laughed at uh, the angel, I mean God would come to tell her that she's going to be a mother of the child. She laughed. She smiles, and God notices it. And he asks her, "Is it anything difficult, too hard for the Lord?" You know. This Praise the Lord. Every way, every time. In any situations, I, I I speak to myself, Lord, you told Sarah this. And I know it. But nothing is difficult for you. Yes. Nothing wow. is too difficult. Amen. Amen. I, Thank as you, I was Mama. sitting here, I was just reminded of something else. You know, this is not my testimony. This is what I heard. And yeah, I told that priest, I'm going to tell everyone about this. So now this is a priest whom I know. He, you know, how they live by themselves and whatever. He was in his room. He slept and I think it was on All Souls Day. He woke up and he went for Mass. He just to to say the Mass. So he went and then everything was fine. So from the church, those two people and his door is open every time. You know, his residence, anyone goes. So only his people will enter his residence. So those, these two ladies, I think, came for some water or something to take a bottle or something for him. And they saw that the full, the whole ceiling of his room was down. So 
So can you imagine? Now this man, if it if this thing had to happen, the whole ceiling came down. So I'm thinking when I heard it, like he didn't actually, he calls me sometimes, you know, but it didn't matter to him. So he didn't, I didn't know about it till I went to see him last week. And he said, oh, you know, come and see my room. And I said, what happened? And he told me the whole ceiling came down. I thought, what? So he, if he was sleeping there in his bed, the whole ceiling coming down, can you imagine? I said, this is Psalm 91. The angels are sent. The angels are commanded charge over you. And it was like I was thinking and I was just getting such goosebumps, you know. So now he went, he got up and went to church. He didn't know what was going on. And he didn't even see it. Someone else saw it. So how, how we call our, our God, our refuge and our protector, our strength. He is our refuge. He protects us all the time. And I'm thinking, wow. You know, because I'm telling him he's a priest and I'm so excited. I said, I have to tell the whole world about it. What if you were there? You wouldn't even be able to put, to get up from that mess, you know. And I don't even know how you would find your phone. What would you do? I'm, I'm just imagining what would he do. But he was not in his bed. He was in the church. And he, this beautiful is our God. This is our God. He'll make sure everything Every minor thing is weighted. So and and you know now they have to fix this. So now we are all fundraising for for that project to be fixed. But still, you know this is God. He was his life was saved. Praise Jesus. Hello. Hello. Praise, Praise Lord Jesus. Sister. Yes, sister. Could you hear me? I think the internet was unstable. Praise God. So yeah, that, that is... Everything. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is our God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Yes, my dear sister Melanie. Sorry? God. You know, our Lord is always there protecting us. He's our source of refuge and strength. I'll just mm -hmm. share a short testimony of what happened to us on the 1st of January. Praise so we were traveling on the 1st from, from Goa to Pune. Uh, we had a, a friend's wedding and plus we had, a, you know, we had scheduled some sessions on the word, some, some of our mission work. And as we were driving on the highway, we left very early in the morning around, I think around 6.30 or so. So the roads were quite empty. Until we crossed the Goa border and we were just, you know, cruising. Vincent was driving very fast on those roads because they were open. And we were on the highway. And all of a sudden, you know, this was a four-lane drive. So there were two, two lanes on one side and two lanes for the incoming, two lanes for the outgoing traffic. Yeah. All of a sudden, we, we see this uh, black car. It's a, it's a big, huge Jeep. And it is coming in full speed on the same lane that we were basically it's coming in the opposite direction but on the wrong side so we are on that lane and the car is coming towards us in full speed you know what do you do at that time what do you do yeah i just said jesus i just cried out jesus and you know what vincent just slammed the brakes the car which was coming full speed it swerved on one side and completely averted from getting you know, banging into us or ramming into praise us. Praise God. Thank wow, you. praise that the Lord. One of us in the car, we literally like, you know, heaved a sigh of relief. My daughter was behind. Her friend was behind. We just heaved a sigh of relief. And I said, Lord, you are truly our protector. You have put Amazing. your angels. Behind. I don't know on the first, maybe those, you know, those, the people, the guys in that car were drunk or what, but they didn't realize that they were actually coming on the wrong side. And on and, full speed, and they would get you completely. Oh my God! We were also driving at on full speed because obviously it is it's on a highway, so we are you know taking and there's nobody on the road, and it was such a miraculous moment that really the angels wow. I believe praise the Lord with us, you know, from that from yes. that uh, from that oh mission. My it, was, yes. it was just miraculous. And, you know, the angels are always around you, inside, yes. beside you, you know, on all sides of you. And every time, you know, whenever we leave the house, we always, you know, confess the Psalm 91 every single time when we leave. 
And I truly believe that God's angels, you know, are guarding us at all times. Praise yes. God. Jesus. And it's like they don't even waste one tiny, you know, second. They're there instant. How yes. amazing is yeah, that? Because it's a, it's a fraction of a second that, you know, exactly. something will happen. Exactly. And you know, the strangest part of it, Sister Maria, you know, after that, as we saw that car whiz past, we observed that there was something very strange over that car. First of all, it was a black car. It had a yes. black yes. car black number plate normally mm. our plates in india are white with black numbers on it this had a it was a black plate and had gray numbers and the numbers also were strange it was like a six six wow. six it was a very strange number it was as though you know the enemy was in full force to yeah. why were you going point. why were you going there you were going for the with the word exactly exactly you exactly. see somehow we had to share the word it. oh my goodness Yes, God. in fact, that mission trip, we had a deliverance. We had, you know, so many yes. healings. We we ministered at the at the Mother Teresa uh, Institute where there were there are people who are who are destitute, the uh, you know, men and women there, yeah. and they no, wanted to stop all, all that. Sorry, Sister Narmala. We wanted to stop all that, Sister Bell. Yes, and obviously, but obviously, you, yeah, yeah, the great part that you're going with. Good. You know how the hand of God just over there. You know, yeah. praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So much. You know that protection means so much to us, isn't it? Absolutely. So and much. You were sharing, Sister Maria, about you know the the small ways that the Lord protects us. How yes. I was just I, it, I I was not even in the Word at that time. It was years ago when my my child was very small. You know, she was just crawling on the in our room. And she had just left the door and gone into the other room. And this whole wall unit, which had a mirror wow. with it, and it just came crumbling down. Praise God. And, you know, we just said, imagine if she had been just there. She was crawling at that time. If she had that, that whole thing had fallen over her, she would have gone, been crushed. But at that split second, she just left the room. And yes. a few seconds after that, the, the whole unit just came down, you know. And that's, Praise you know, God. how the Lord just protects his children. He's such a loving God. He loves us so much. He, he is. He is such a loving God. Praise God. You know, I remember now this Holy Spirit is amazing. You know, when I was showering them, okay, this is my four-year-old. Because I tell him all the time, baby, it's Jesus. Jesus is with you. Jesus loves you. You are a prophet. So um, maybe they are children. They don't understand. So you know how you put soap all over him and under the feet as well? So then yeah. it's slippery, you know, the with the tiles. So he just fell. Now see, when he, he's standing there, he could fall on his head. But he thinks he just rolled over instead of his head. He just rolled over and, and he was like, this is not me saying it. He said, but grandma. And he didn't cry. He was fine. He didn't hit. So he said, grandma, but how did this happen? Jesus helped me to roll over. Now he's telling me that Jesus helped him roll over. He knew what could have happened. Now, if he had to, he's a small, small head he's got. Praise he the Lord. His head, it would have hurt him. I don't know what would have happened because, you know, he would have, it, it, he's a child. So he said, but grandma, how did that happen? Jesus helped me to roll. And I said, not only that, baby, all the angels came and they stayed with you. They didn't want you to get hurt because you are a David. So, do you know? he couldn't stop talking about it but how did that happen and I said yeah that happens that's why you must love Jesus no one else loves us more than Jesus so yeah and you know I was so happy that it came from him for little things that he know because they're not with me all the time but whenever he's there I remind him he said you know you are just not you are just the best baby that Jesus gave you to me you know I didn't go looking for you Jesus said take this is a beautiful child for you <laughs> so, so yeah so yeah and he said but how did it happen actually that's right that made me think if he had to hit his head that would have been enough for him in the bathroom you know so praise god yes all the time the angels are with us praise god praise thank jesus you. thank you jesus praise you know god. as, as sister suzanne also was sharing about you know the, the yeah spirit, the spirit going ahead uh, I was also reminded of something that happened it was last year, but uh, end of the year. 
on the 21st of December, my daughter was traveling from, from US to India. And um, a friend of ours, you know, was, uh, was scheduled to pick her up and take her to the airport. So we were having our four o'clock class here, our Bible class as usual. And normally I don't keep my phone, you know, during the class. But that day it so happened that I kept my mobile phone next to me. I was not sharing the word, but I was in the class. It was on silent. And suddenly I saw a call coming in. You know? And when I saw that call, you know, immediately I got startled because it was a call from this particular friend who was going to pick up my daughter from her apartment to take her to the airport. And I immediately picked up the call. I went to the other room I picked up and he said, you know what, Melanie, I'm, I'm outside uh, Caroline's apartment. I'm waiting for the last half an hour and she hasn't come out. You know, I'm trying to call her and she, I think her, call, her, her phone is not going through and I'm not able to get through. Is there any way you can get through her? And I said, you know, I don't, I have only her number. I don't have the numbers of her, of her roommates or flatmates. I don't have their numbers. So I told him, I said, uh, would you be able to, you know, go and just knock at the door or, you know, ring the bell? She said, see, it's very early in the morning. It's like, uh, you know, quarter to six and I don't want to disturb the, uh, you know, the rest of this, but I'll see what I can do. And he was quite calm. He said, you know, just, I, I'll handle it. Don't worry. But, you know, as a mother, obviously, I was in yeah, yeah. panic situation. Yeah. And I was just, it was going in my mind. And I said, now, God. God. If she doesn't, you know, come out, she is going to miss her connecting flight, her flight, and then she has got four, four connecting yes, flights. Yes, it's a long journey. And uh, what I said, I said, Lord, Spirit of the Lord, you are going to take over this situation. Praise I don't God. know how it's going to happen, but Spirit of God, I just entrust this entire thing to you. You are going to somehow make a way for my daughter, you know, to get out of that room, wake up, or she's sleeping, whatever, and just, you know, get out of that. And I just continued to be in the class. Uh, after about half an hour, I called him up and he said, oh, you know, Melanie, she still hasn't come out of the of the room. Now it's getting closer. And uh, I'm trying to call her. She's not picking up the phone. So again, I said, Lord, I'm just entrusting everything to you. And I continued to be at rest because I said, I know Jesus. You are mm. a God who's very faithful. Amen. I've brought this ticket for her. You know, you have arranged her to come to yes. India. You're going to take charge. It's your responsibility. That's what yes. I said. Right. I just need to do that. And about uh, half an hour after that, about 40 minutes after that, you know, I got a call. I got a message from this guy. Everything is under control. And, uh, you know, Caroline is with me in the car. And I said, to Lord, thank you so much. You know, later. Oh, I my just, goodness. Yes. I spoke to my child. I spoke to my child. And she said, you know, Praise man, the Lord. I do not know what happened. Actually, I had put my alarm for 445. But my phone, as usual, it was on no. What is that called? Di do not disturb mode. And because I had an exam the previous day and I came home very late and I was extremely tired, I forgot to remove the do not disturb mode. So the alarm doesn't ring apparently through the do okay. not disturb mode. So it never rang at 4.45. So she says, when I got up, I normally wake up about 7, 7.30, but I don't know what, something just pushed me to wake up. And oh, I just woke wow. up at 6.30. I realized I was almost two hours late to wake up, okay? And this man has been waiting for one hour. She said, in five minutes, I was out of the house. I brought my suitcase. I just came down. I was out of the house. And you know the miracle? Normally, the the the, the distance from that, from the, her apartment to the to the airport would have taken airport. a good half an hour, an hour. It just took a few minutes, about 10 minutes. The roads were all Wow. Empty. Oh. Much, the roads were empty. When she re reached the airport, there were no queues. She just breezed through immigration and she checked in on time and got wow. her. Now, isn't this the Lord? Wow. Isn't this God? It will only yes. be God. And you know, Amen. I just can't, and you know, we always used to, you know, this, this, my daughter, she wow. has, you know, a beautiful uh, gift that she can sleep. She can sleep even if there's so much of noise around her. Mm -hmm. And you know, as she was even telling her family, she said, it's my mom's prayer because I do not know how I woke up. I yes. would just push wow. to wake up and I just got out of that house. I said, Lord, you're so faithful. You're so wonderful. You know, I, I could not do, there was nothing I could do at that time. What would I do? I just said, Lord, you're my yes. only Yes. Yes. 
That's it. Wow. But that's how the spirit that's of God it. takes over. You know, yeah. the yeah. spirit of the Lord. It just you just send the spirit ahead. He is going to make all things straight. He is going to take care yeah. of everything. And just keep your mind at rest. Yes. Praise God. And Praise imagine God. if you were anxious, if we were panicking, you 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 couldn't get her. Imagine what your state would be. All that you know. Trying to control that situation. But it's only when you stay at rest, God could do something. Amen. Amen. Very true. I still have many questions on travel. No, I'll tell you next, next, uh, next session. But that's You're breaking, my darling. I said, Maria, even I have a few testimonies of travel testimonies, great testimonies, but I would not want to say it today. I want this Bellin to speak today. But she continues yes. and maybe I can hold on to the next session. Yeah, yeah. Next session, Nirmala. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You. All right, my dear. Yes. Praise so, we're ready to start? Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So, you know, as I have been reflecting this season of Christmas and we have New Year, we have so many celebrations all around and everybody is in festive spirit. And uh, we have been doing our own share, you know, of going out and ministering and sharing God's word. There is one thing, you know, my dear sisters, that surpasses all understanding, all boundaries, all, you know, human capabilities. And that is the language of love. The language of yes. love. You know, it, it just goes beyond everything. You know, as we were, you know, ministering and sharing the word with these destitute people in the Mother Teresa home, there were about 150 of them. Many of them, you know, are not even in their proper senses. They cannot comprehend. How do you break the word with such people? How do you even tell yes. them about God's love? Because they cannot, they cannot even understand, you know, it's beyond yes, your capacity, yes. your understanding. Okay. But there is one language that they can understand. And that is the language of love. Wow. The language of God. love. You know, if you just, that's why it says in the book of Corinthians, you know, it talks about, it, it talks, uh, no, in the book of Galatians, first talks about Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, as we just heard in the song today, brother was saying about, you know, against these, there is no law. He was talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And of that, one of the fruit is love. There is no law. There is no, you know, nothing that, you know, uh, deters you or nothing that you have to, you know, abide by or do some performance or do some, you know, you have to break your head or you have to put in extra effort. You simply have to rest in his love and know who is on the inside of you. You know, the only way that you can love with God kind of love is agape love is only when you have experienced that love of God yourself. You know, as we, you know, see those sisters who day after day, I always tell them, mm. I said, sister, we come, you know, once in a while, maybe we come once in 15 days or once in 20 days to share the word, you know, to, to minister to those people. But you are doing this job day oh after God. day, night after night. How do you do this? There's only one way that this happens. And that is through the love, through love. And okay. how do we share this love? You know, it's not a love that is, uh, you do good to me and that's why I do good to, me, good to you. You are good to me, that's why I'm good to you. You gave me some gift and so I return that gift. This love goes beyond what the other person, the expectation that you have from the other person. This love is that pure God kind of love that we are talking about. The agape love that we have received the day we became born again. You know, when we received Christ, Romans 5, 5, the love of God was poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, right? That love, that pure, unconditional, agape love of God helps us to love like Jesus. That love is, we cannot buy it. We cannot, you know, we cannot work on it. It's simply depending on the Holy Spirit. That's why it's a fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And as you experience more and more of the love of Christ, you will see that you automatically become a conduit of that. And today I'm going to talk about this exactly. How are we, how do we love as Jesus loved? If we depend on our own strength, on our own, you know, uh, what I would say, uh, motivation or performance, we are just going to fail. 
we have to have to uh, what a uh, tap into the into the stream into that living living stream of water that jesus has filled in our spirit that love that he has poured in our spirit the day we mm -hmm. became, the day we accepted him as our lord god and savior amen praise god amen praise so god so the first thing about this love is that it never keeps a record of wrongs and that's the benchmark that we have you know for for our love walk if we truly love someone we are not going to keep a record of wrongs say a mom you know no matter how much the, the toddler sister maria you have your grandchild irritating you troubling you you know screaming uh, screaming his heart out his lungs out and yet oh, you respond in love you don't keep a record of wrongs and so you know say he troubled me the other day and he also troubled me the other day and this day he was not he you have you do not keep a record of wrongs no and that's what love does because we understand that our god never keeps a record of our wrong doings he doesn't keep a record the day we accepted him as the slate has been wiped once and for all the problem with us humans as we grow we start you know accumulating as a child we never remember but as we grow we start accumulating or you know piling up the wrongs that others have done against us i don't know about you but i was before you know i experienced the true love i mean it's a journey i'm not reached perfection i used to many times keep a record of those wrongs and then one fine day when you know there was there was an argument or there was a you know a, a kind of a a uh, 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 lack of uh, understanding or all those wrongs and all those things that you have kept in a like a kind of a file it just comes to the fore and it erupts like a volcano am i only the person or have you all oh, also no 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 we have all been there my dear all been there isn't it and we yeah. are work in progress the lord is teaching us day by day my child do not keep a record of wrongs love does not keep a record of wrongs that is how jesus loved he saw the heart of the person whether it was a sinner whether that person had you know had a spirit of mammon or whether that person had gone wrong or had a had adultery or lust or whatever he did not look at that person's sin he looked at that person through the eyes of love he just loved that person anyways I'm going to take you to Psalm uh, 113 verses 3 to 4. You know it says that as far as the east is from the west the Lord has removed our transgression from us. I think we'll go first to 133 to 4. There it says that God doesn't keep a record of our sins. You know the day we accepted is somebody sharing the screen sister Maria? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Baba, yeah, let's go first to one thirty, Psalm one hundred and thirty, verses three and four. You there, Baba? You know? Hey, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Word of God says, "Love the Lord does not keep a record of our sins." Isn't it so beautiful? No matter what sin we have done. no matter what we sin we are just going to commit even now, even after we are born again god never keeps a record of those sins he doesn't no. say so this is what you did yesterday this is what you did day before yesterday this is what you did so many years ago when we accept him as our lord god and savior and he becomes that abiding word in it of his becomes root takes root in our hearts starts abiding in us now the lord never keeps a record of our wrongs see what it says in verse number 3 if you o lord should mark our iniquities lord who would stand but there is forgiveness with you there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered imagine if the lord had marked our iniquities would we able to ever stand before him never but god never looks at us at our <clears throat> sin he looks at us through the precious blood of his son jesus christ you know when you when you understand this your whole 
um, perspective of how you approach God will totally change. You don't approach God as a sinner. Many times we always come to God, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I've done this. Lord, I did this. Lord, I, I, I got angry with this. I, I did this. I did this. We come to God as though, you know, God is a punishing God waiting for us to, to hit us with a stick. Our God is a loving God. He doesn't remember our wrongs. We have to develop that attitude and say, Lord, yes, I have done wrong. I repent. And I know that you have forgiven me. Now, I instead of becoming sin conscious, I become God conscious. I start revering God. See what it says in verse 4. There is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. That's what our God wants us to come before him with an awe, with a respect, with that, you know, reverential fear saying, Lord, you are my everything. You are so great. You are greater than anything, greater than my sin, greater than anything. You have covered me already. And now I come to the Lord and I say, Lord, what is it what you want me to do? What is your purpose for me? How you give me the grace and help me to love like you love. Like you love. Amen. Praise God. I have that love inside of me, but I have to draw it from my spirit into my mind, into my soul, so that now my thinking begins to see, to change. I don't see the people around me as my physical, as my, as my mind tells me to see them, but I see them through the eyes of love. I see them through the eyes of God. I see them as my spirit sees them. And who is in my spirit? Jesus inside my spirit. And so now I can love like Jesus loved. It's the Christ in me who's loving them. I see Christ in them. And the Christ in me is now loving those people. Even the people who are so hard to love. You know, when you take this approach, even one somebody who has who has hurt you, who has made fun of you, maybe who has mocked you, who's turned his or her back towards you, you are able to love them because you are not seeing them. You are seeing the Christ in them. Maybe they are not yet come to God. Maybe they are still walking in unbelief. Maybe they are still, you know, not, not yet accepted Christ. But through your eyes of spirit, as you are praying for them, you are already seeing the Christ in them. Amen. Praise God. Are you getting me, my dear brothers yes, and sisters? Yes, beautiful. So this is just a kind of a part two. I was listening to Sister Samantha's talk of last week and it was such a beautiful talk. You know, it just, it just, you know, held me to leap from my, from my chair and I said, what a wonderful recipe there. Praise we had it God. right there where she said, when Jesus saw Peter and Peter, you know, came into that, um, that sin of, of uh, saying that, you know, um, this should not happen to you. Remember, uh, Peter said, yes, this should yes. not happen to you, Lord. What did yes. Jesus do? Jesus never mm -hmm. rebuked Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. Spirit. He did not rebuke Peter. He did not see the sin in Peter. He did not condemn Peter. When we love like Jesus loved, we will not see our, our loved ones as our enemies, or we will not even rebuke, we will not even say that, you know, we will not even look at them and mark their transgressions. But we will say, get behind me, Satan. Satan, you get out of my life. Satan, who's causing that problem for me, get out of my life, get out of my family, get out of my loved one. It's not that person. It is Satan inside that person, Satan, who's, who's provoking that person to behave like that. It's never the person. And then you consider that that person now is converted and moved from the kingdom of darkness, translated to the kingdom of light. The spirit of God is now taken over that person. So now that person no longer behaves like, like you know, as, as you see with your physical eyes, but through your spiritual eyes, you are already making an imagination that that person is behaving through the spirit of Christ. It's all about you, how you're thinking in your mind. Because most of the time, the problem is here. We look at our loved one and we say, oh, that person, no, will never change. Always, every time the same thing happens. Never will change. We look at some particular problem and say, you know, this problem is never changed. This pain is, you know, it's never going away. The doctors have said this, it's going to be, uh, what, what word I heard today. 
it's going to be chronic mm. yeah and we take that word so much it's not that it's not that it's not that what the doctor has said that is important that is that is the lie of the enemy it's up to you and me and say get behind me satan praise god praise god thank you jesus <laughs> so coming to the point of loving like jesus love you know there are three instances which i've taken from scripture and i just want to want you to put yourself in that shoes how jesus loved okay the first one i want to go to the book of uh, the gospel of mark mark chapter 10 uh, enoch can we go there mark chapter 10 praise god thank you jesus thank you enoch praise god and maybe we can go around verse number 20 or so 20 yeah okay so this is the is the is the story where there was this rich man who comes to jesus and tells him lord what must i do good master he calls jesus good master good master what must i do to have eternal life it was a good question and this man in his own thinking he had kept all the commandments that's what he says master mm. i have observed all these commandments from my youth but jesus saw this man's heart he knew that this man had made his possessions his god he could see this man in the spirit he could see this man was was actually lying because this man said i have kept all the commandments i have observed all of them from my youth but it was very obvious that he had actually disobeyed the very first commandment of loving the lord his god with all his heart with all his soul with all his mind because he loved his possessions more than god which we see later when jesus told him go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor the man went away very sad yeah shall we read it go it will hard up first uh, you know the same man who had come to jesus running he came to jesus running no no uh, go for yeah go up yes very good go a little more up there there is there it says he came one running and kneeled to him and asked him good master what shall i do that i may inherit eternal life so this rich young man thought that he had to do something to inherit eternal life he thought that he had to actually perform in order to inherit eternal life and he was so excited because he was coming to jesus for approval in his mind he was doing everything right and he wanted jesus to ratify to confirm that he had done everything right and that's why he was so excited he came running and kneeled unto jesus and jesus turns around and tells him he says you know you know the commandments what you have to do and the man says yes i have done all these commandments but jesus looked at him and knew that he had violated the very first commandment because jesus could see him through and through he was god and yet see what it says in mark chapter 10 verse 21 jesus looked at this man with love then jesus beholding him loved him you know these words just struck me so much the man was trying to earn jesus's favor by his own performance telling jesus that he had done everything right jesus knew that this man had the spirit of mammon the spirit of you know uh, of riches he knew that this man had been holding on to his to his possessions and yet jesus beheld him and loved him you know how many of us we have you know friends maybe we had these friends before we became born again they were all in the world they were doing things of the world and maybe some of them are still in the world they are still doing things of the world and sometimes when we look at them we look at them with condescending attitude with judgmental attitude 
and thinking that we are, you know, we have done everything nicely and we are, you know, in the kingdom now. We have the word of God and we are coming to Bible class. What does Jesus do? Jesus looked at that man and loved him. What a beautiful lesson we can learn from Jesus. I myself learned from it. You know, there are so many people around us, maybe some of our loved ones who are still in the world. Either they have not heard the good news or even hearing the good news, they have failed to accept the news. And yet, if we love like Jesus, we are called to look at them with the eyes of love. Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Loved him. And he told him, you just give your possessions and come and follow me. And that same man who had come running to Jesus, now he goes away sad because he had made possessions his God. Jesus saw that man through and through. He was looking at his heart, at his heart condition. He knew that his heart was not a sincere heart. And yet, Jesus loved him. Now that, there are so many things that you can learn from this. Loving like Jesus loved helps us to go beyond the boundaries, the, you know, the things that we have created, the veils that we have created ourselves over people. Looking beyond what we see in the physical and looking at them through the eyes of Christ, loving them. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Anybody wants to add something or any question you have or maybe you were reminded of something at this point? Sister Maria? No, this is amazing, Melanie. And, you know, it is like, see, we feel that as well, right? We always feel we are doing the right thing. You know, oh, yeah, I've done that right. I've done that right, right? But but there are so many things we are not getting because of lack of knowledge, because we are not understanding the word properly. So we are not getting, we still look at the world in that way. We fail to be directed because we don't um, fellowship. It's not the presence of the Holy Spirit is not really a connection yet, isn't it? Am I right? It's just like... Yeah, it's, you know, we have the Spirit. The Holy Spirit yes. is inside of us. But we are not sensitive to His voice talking. Correct, yes. yes. That is the problem. And, you know, uh, what Alan told that he was sad. He went away sad. So this is really very striking. When Jesus told him that, he said, oh, really? Only that will hold me? Okay. Now, right now, I'm going to say that I'll come to you. No? Because he still had his love more than God. So he was very right. No? Because he wanted to earn it. He wanted a favor from God. But it was not ready to give us what to love more than the Lord. That was well. and that what made him sad. It's not that the Lord pointed it out to him that he was going to be happy to give up. Praise God. You know, Jesus' love for that man and for all of us, for every one of us, is based on God's mercy alone. Not on our worthiness to be loved. All of us mm -hmm. have fallen short. Correct. We don't yes. deserve to be loved. Praise we don't God. deserve. And yet God loves us. See this man. If you look at it in the physical, he didn't deserve the love. Because he was a he was he was living an insincere life. He mm. thought he was good before God, but actually he had violated the very first commandment. And yet God looks, God's mercy goes beyond, beyond that. Not only God did not look at him because he was worthy, but despite his unworthiness, he still loved him. And that's what God does to you and me. Amen. How much Praise more God. when we look at people, we look at them through the merciful eyes of Jesus. Having mercy on them. Maybe some of them do not know the word. Maybe they have been led erroneously. Maybe there is some spirit that has taken over them. Like the spirit of, um, of mammon that we are talking about in this passage. We were there at one time. Yes. And still we are not doing everything right. Correct. And God had mercy on us. God has mercy. You know, if mercy of God was not there, we would not have been able to wake up every morning. That's why it says in the book of Lamentations, God's mercy is new every morning. 
every day when you wake up, be reminded, thank you, Lord, that your mercy is new every morning. It was not for your mercy. Who could stand before you? I would have, I've not even had awakened and seen the next morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the yes. Lord's mercy for you and me. And that's why he's reminding us for us to have mercy on others, to love others with that merciful heart. Praise mm. God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. See what it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. You know, I, I've been meditating on this verse ever since I heard, I think, brothers talk in, in December when he was talking about joy. And this verse, I wrote it down and I've been meditating on it. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of thy heart. Praise God. Mercy and truth. The Lord wants us to be merciful towards others, just as he is merciful to us. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise Lord, God. for mercy. Such a merciful God we have. Let us learn from this God and love like him. Be merciful to those around us. Maybe sometimes we say, oh, they don't even deserve it. They are acting, you know, so unbecomingly. The spirit of the of the world has taken over them. Serves them right. I don't know when you've heard that the saying sometimes. Serves them right. God never says serves them right. If he had to say serve them right for us, we would all be crushed. We would all be you know, finished. But God's mercy is new every morning. Let not mercy and truth forsake us. By bind them around our necks and write them upon the table Table of thy heart. It says tablets. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So the first thing that we can learn to love like Jesus loved is being merciful. Seeing Christ in that person. Not looking at them because of what they are doing, but looking at the Christ in them. Maybe they don't yet, you know, appear as though they have anything of God. But you're looking at them through the eyes of the Spirit, through Jesus' eyes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't our God so wonderful? And the so Spirit of wonderful. God is teaching us so nicely how Jesus looked at that man out of love. Out of love. And I'm sure once that man went, the Bible doesn't say, but I'm sure there must have been things running in his mind. He went away sad. So he must have been contemplating. Sometimes just our act of mercy towards some people will make them wonder and make them change. Thanks. Think about it. They may say, you know, it's like, this person is so sweet or merciful towards me. An act of forgiveness, like that act of forgiveness that, you know, our, our old Pope, Pope, um, Pope John Paul, he showed mm. towards that person who had actually pointed the gun on him. Yes. Then there was that other case in, in North India where there was this... Uh, the wife of this uh, stains who had actually this this uh, person stains and his sons were actually burnt alive and his wife had mercy and forgave those people those very people who had actually caused that caused yes. her, her husband and the and children to die to be burned to death and this would bring about a change in those people just that act of mercy Bring, brought about a change in those perpetrators of those crimes, those people who had done these things. And many of them turned to Christ. How is it possible? It's because of the love of God, the mercy of God that is flowing through you. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank, you, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This verse in AMPC is quite nice, uh, Melanie. Which Proverbs 3.3? 3? Yeah, can we put yeah, it yeah. in? Yeah, can we put it in? See, let not mercy and kindness, shutting out all hatred and selfishness, and truth, shutting out all deliberate hypocrisy or falsehood, forsake you. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the truth, the truth of the word of God actually exposes the hypocrisy, the falsehood in us. Because sometimes, you know, we may put on a very, very nice act in front of everybody. Look mm. all goody goody. But the Lord knows our heart. 
Mm. He knows everything. This rich young man, if you know, on the surface of it, he looked very good. He looked, you know, he was following everything to the T. But he was a hypocrite, just as the Pharisees were at that time. Mm. But the truth of God's word exposes that hypocrisy in us. You know, every day the Lord is teaching us. There are some areas of our life we still have to come into light. And the, only the truth of God's word will expose those areas and help us to change in those areas. That's what the word of God does. And that's why it says, let not mercy and kindness and truth forsake you. Truth, shutting out all deliberate hypocrisy or falsehood. Amen. Praise God. And thank Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the next one, which I was exactly what is shown here, is kindness. The way that Jesus loved. You know, Jesus loved others through kindness. Uh, I am reminded about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, can we go to Luke chapter 19? Zacchaeus was a publican. He was a tax collector. He was a man who, through the eyes of the world, must have swindled so many people, you know, cheated. Because tax collectors, they used to do that. They used to actually exhort more than was required from the people and keep the, the, the extra amount for them. That's what was, was a trait at that time for tax collectors. And Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Zacchaeus would have, you know, cheated so many people. And that day when, J when Jesus encountered G Zacchaeus, when Zacchaeus goes up to that tree to have a greater look at Jesus because he was a man of a short stature. So he had to climb the sycamore tree in order to have a good view of Jesus. And maybe Jesus' eyes just met Zacchaeus' eyes at that time. And what does Jesus tell him? Zacchaeus, I'm going to come and have supper with you. Uh, Luke, Luke chapter 19, you know. I'm going to come and dine with you. That very act of kindness transformed Zacchaeus. See what it says. Luke chapter 19, verse number 5. Let's go down. Here is Zacchaeus on the top of the tree, in the sycamore tree. And Jesus is looking at Zacchaeus. And see what he says in verse number 5. And when Jesus reached the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Jesus looked beyond Zacchaeus' past. The past of being a sinner, of cheating people, all that. He just approached Zacchaeus with a kind heart. And through that act of kindness that day, Zacchaeus, what happened? Zacchaeus was completely transformed. Zacchaeus now hurries and comes down. And now he prepares to receive Jesus. And all the people are seeing this thing happen. And they are saying, look at Jesus. Here is a man who is a sinner. And now Jesus wants to go and dine with him. They all begin to complain and mutter among themselves. But Jesus is beyond all that. Because he knows and he knows that one act of kindness. Just reaching out to Zacchaeus and telling him, I am going to come. And stay at your house today. That one act of kindness transforms Zacchaeus' life forever. And Zacchaeus says, now I'm going to give up. Go down, um, move up. Uh, Enoch, go, go to verse number 8 or 9. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. See what Zacchaeus says. See, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone out of anything, I now restore four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household, since Zacchaeus too is a son of Abraham. You know, the Lord wants everyone to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. He doesn't want anyone to perish. One act of kindness that you and I do to somebody can bring them to Christ, can bring salvation to your house. 
you know, I'll just give you an, uh, a, a, a short testimony. You know, we have this gardener in our, in our society who basically looks after the garden. He and his family, they stay in a small little house next to our, in our inside the society. And they look after the garden, they take the kachra and, you know, take the garbage and do all the work around. And we have been, you know, sharing God's love with them in small little doses. When they come over, we give them something to eat. We prepare some food for them. Sometimes we give them clothes. And, you know, we, we sow in, uh, in their life. Now, those acts of kindness that we have done towards them have paved the way for us to okay. share with them the word of God. And so one day we actually called this man, his family over because they were having a problem between husband and wife. We told them about Jesus. We explained to them, you know, what Jesus has done for us, how much he loves us. And you know what happened? This man and wife not only reconciled, the following month she conceived. And a few, a few months ago, I mean, in the month of October, she delivered a child. Now, on Christmas Day, I think I went out and I wanted to give them something. And I always tell them when I meet them, you know, that Jesus loves them. We have our God called Jesus. They had a special child. So they have been praying to Jesus for that child. The child has shown improvement. And on Christmas Day, when I approached them, you know, I told, I, I was just talking to them about God. And they said, you know what, madam, we went to some church and we went and we attended a service there. Now, who told them to go? I don't know. They just went themselves. Mm. The act of kindness that you show to people, they can actually see something in you which is different. That's what Jesus went did to Zacchaeus. He actually put himself and said, Zacchaeus, I'm not looking at your sin. I'm coming and having dinner with you. I'm coming to dine with you. That's what God wants us to go out of our comfort zones. Maybe there are people, our milkman, our, our, you know, some people who come and deliver things. An act of kindness can bring salvation to their home because they will see Jesus through the loving love inside of you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit is so creative and he gives us such beautiful ways. You know, in, in, in our country, sometimes it's it's very people can construe it uh, wrongly and they can say, oh, you are converting people, you are changing. But mm. nothing can stop the act of love. That's why I said that language of love goes beyond all boundaries. Now, you are not forcing Christ into them, but because they have seen the kindness and love, that love which you have showered up, shown in to, towards them, wants them to accept who you have with you. Praise As God. Sense, are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. And that's Jesus. loving like Jesus loved. Through our loving kindness, our kindness to others. Maybe some people, you know, they are they are, they don't deserve. You say they don't deserve kindness because you know they they are so so out of this uh, out of our our kind of thinking. It's easy to fellowship with people who are all in the word of God, who are mm. all having uh, this kind of fellowship like we have. But when you go out into the world, maybe you go to your workplace. Sister Maria, you go to your hospital. You will mm. see people are not like you. They are different kind of people, isn't it? Yes. How are you going to interact with them? There's one language that you can show them. It is a language of love. And they are going to see there's something different between this person. She does it differently. I want to know this Christ. I want to know what is it that helps us, help her to keep a smile on her face every day, despite everything that is going on. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody wants to add something? It's, you said it so beautifully, Melanie. You know, it just, that's how it is. And it's very, very hard. It's just not easy at all. We are all Zacchaeus. You know, we want to stay in the corner and see what Jesus is, how we can feel his love, what we can do, how we can know his word, how we can talk about him. But at some stage, it is about me, isn't it? Something little bit is about me as well. 
So, yeah. And then, like you said, when I go to work, I just can't stand laziness and whatever because we go, we work in the, in the night and we are only few of us. And most of our patients are sleeping. All of them are sleeping, right? And you don't know anything bad can happen to them as they are sleeping. But if they are assessed properly early, we can, you know, we can do the proper judgment during the night. And somehow when, when you go, you are not given a proper story about the patient and you don't know in the right, in the night you face problems. And there you go, my goodness, you know, and see, and I see that evil one coming. So you have already forgotten all the words, everything, all that love that you are, you are come prepared to give it. You know, you are just, I'm just so mad at these people. And that gets me so guilty because I say, you didn't, I, I'm trying to tell them they don't do their job properly. You know, if you had to do this, we could do better for this patient and all this. And, you know, uh, like you said, it, it really gives me that guilt feeling. Oh, I shouldn't have, I should have been better. I'm the one who talks about Jesus. I'm the one who reads the word. I'm the one who do, does this. And that enemy gives you that guilt. But even if I say sorry to them, I can never say, you know, I can never justify my actions. So, yeah, it's just like this Zacchaeus who went and Jesus approached him with love. And even I can do so much better. I can even say, okay, you know. So, yeah, very rightly and nicely you said it. Yes, you know, if, yes. if, we, if we try to root in our own strength, Sister Maria, we yes. are definitely going to fail. You know, fail. and in fact, yeah. sometimes we start the day and we say, oh, today I'm going to try to do everything, you know, perfectly and, you know, everything. And then something or the other, just that moment gets thrown at you and you immediately get into your physical. You get, you yes. start operating back again in the flesh. And that's a constant war. Walking yes. in the spirit yes. and walking in the flesh. Because we are a spirit spirit being, but we live in this body. We have a mind. And that's why we need to constantly renew our mind. Tell ourselves, yes. what would Jesus do? I think I, I shared this earlier. WWJD. What would Jesus do, Lord? Yes. What do you want? Just take a, just instead of giving immediately and reacting to the situation, just take a few minutes, step then, back. Yes, yes. Lord, yes. How would you do? What would you say? Spirit of God, you teach me. You tell me. What should I do? How mm. should I handle the situation? Instead of giving, you know, immediately back. And I, I've started yes. to, you know, see this in my life. And I've seen yes. great, you know, results. Because I don't uh, give in immediately to my emotions. I step back and I say, Lord, you teach me. You control mm. me. Spirit of mm. God, take complete control. Now I'm going to move based on what you want me to do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. It's not easy, as you said, but with the Holy Spirit makes it easy. It, we have yes. to depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us always. But the thing is, Holy Spirit is so beautiful. When, you know, someone else has caused a mistake and you are handling that, right? You are picking up that rubbish. But he is so gentle, so loving. He makes all things possible and beautiful. Nothing wrong happens in our hands because yes. our hands are anointed, you know. But then still, I don't have to open my mouth and say, tell you that you have done wrong. It, it's your mistake. You should have done this better. You should have assessed this patient better, you know. And I realize that extra words, I have to, I have to, I'm answerable to those extra words. But See, still, uh, Sister Maria, there's nothing wrong in correcting those people because yes. you understand that especially even when we come to as parents we need to correct our children it's mm -hmm. not that we just overlook their mistakes or what they do yes and yes, continue, yes you know doing what the wrong but yes. there's a way to do it there's a way yes. to do it you yes. do that correction in love because yes. you love them the ultimate motive is love you are doing yes. it because Praise you want them God. to if you're yes. not doing it based on selfishness and saying, oh, why is it because all everything is coming on me? I'm the yes. end or the end of yes. all. You know, yes. I'm getting caught. Not because of that. Because you want to see a positive change in that person. Yes. But yes. we just can't do it on our own, my dear. Isn't it? We just yes. can't do it on our own. Praise God. The Holy Spirit. That's why uh, Jesus, when he saw Zacchaeus, 
he knew that Zacchaeus, you know, Zacchaeus here, unlike the rich man, was sincerely wanted to know about Jesus because mm. he had heard about Jesus. Mm. And so Jesus saw his heart that, you know, it was a heart filled with love. And so he reached out with that act of kindness. And that literally brought that man, brought brought Zacchaeus into that yes. salvation to his, to his whole house. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Very beautiful. Another way that Jesus loved was through compassion. You know, compassion is something more than pity. It's not pity. You know, mm. you look at people on the street and you feel sad for them. You feel, you know, pity for them. That's not compassion. Compassion allows you to put yourself in that person's shoes and it compels you to action. Wow. Am I, am I, am I, uh, am I making sense? Yes, yeah, say that again, Melanie, please. Compassion allows you to put yourself in that person's shoes and now compels you to action. Praise that means God. when you when you actually feel sorry for that person, you are actually want to do something to alleviate the pain of that person. Mm. You actually want to do, you know, let's take an example from again from the life of Jesus. Here was his best friend Lazarus was dead. Uh, Enoch, you can put from John 11, 30, uh, 35 and 36. Lazarus is, has dead, is dead. Okay? And Martha and Mary are in grief. And they tell Jesus, if you had come a few hours ago, this would not have happened. Now, Baba Jesus, is there. Praise God. Thank you, praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus goes there. And he shares in the grief of Martha and Mary. It says there, that the shortest verse which says, Jesus wept. Web. Yes. The shortest verse in all of scripture. Now, Jesus was God. You know, somebody would say, he's God, how can he be? But Jesus was also 100% human. And he, it was not a fake show of sadness. It was not something that he was faking those tears. He was genuinely sharing in their grief. Now, because he shared in that grief, what did he do? He goes there and he laser, raises Lazarus from the dead. Praise God. It shows the depth of Jesus' love. He put himself in those shoes of those all those grieving women there. And now he said, I can do this through the power of my God, through the power of love, and I'm going to go there. And show this miracle to everybody. This was the depth of Jesus' love. It's an empathy. Empathy means actually feeling for that person. That compassion. Praise God. Now we Baba need to Enoch. Ask, how can we offer the same compassion to those who are hurting? To those who are hurting. There are so John many 11, people. Baba. John 11. John 11. Uh, let's go to verse number 35. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it says. Mm, Jesus, Jesus wept. wept. And then the Jews said, see how tenderly he loved him. Now some people come and say, would he not have opened a blind, a person who opened a blind man's eyes, would he have not prevented this man from dying? There were questions. There were Pharisees who were questioning mm. the way he was actually, Jesus was, the, you know, many people will look at you and they'll say, oh, this person is just making crocodile tools. But when you literally have genuine concern and empathy for that person, you are, you are, you are reaching out to that person with love. You are, you are being one with that person who is hurting. Praise and God. now you begin to share the love of Christ with them. Here is Jesus now raising Lazarus from the dead. You know, many times Jesus showed compassion to the crowd. The, the word of God says sometimes, you know, he taught, he preached, and then he healed them. Because those people had come there, many of them were in pain, many of them had physical difficulties, and Jesus always had compassion on the crowd and healed them. He had compassion on the crowd when he did not want to send them hungry. 
because he could see that they were they were not only physically they, they did not only spiritually require food but they also physically required to be fed and jesus had compassion on them that's what god is teaching us when we love like god loves our compassion will compel us to action you know see say you go to somebody's house and there is somebody who's very sick and they are on a wheelchair now will you just go and say that you know i pray that god makes you well how sad you know that person is on the wheelchair if you mm-hmm. really love that jesus like jesus love you will now share the word of god with them and you will be compelled to now make a prayer with them and and lay your hands on that person isn't it praise god and yes there was this instance once thank you holy spirit uh my a man in my colony uh, my mom where she stays uh he was he, it was his birthday and i think he celebrated his 91st or 92nd birthday and my mom told me you know just go and deliver this cake to them because they're having a party in the evening and i cannot go so you just go and deliver this cake but i truly believe it was the holy spirit that sent me mm. that day to the delivery yes. person for the cake because when i went there you know i saw this man was in a very terrible state he was having some breathlessness his whole family had come in fact his his children had flown from abroad and they were all around his bedside and uh, you know there was a kind of a very kind of what i would say uh, a gloom in the air because they were all you know they were all concerned about their dad he was obviously 92 years old and they they, they thought that you know probably he was he was having some kind of heart condition and they wanted to take him to the to the hospital and they were crowded and there was they you could see from their faces that they were very very um, you know worried and anxious and so i don't know holy spirit just told me you know i have come to give this cake and i just told this this uh, one of the daughters i said can i come inside and make a prayer with your dad and many of them are not believers and she said yeah yeah come come and in front of the whole place there i don't know how the holy spirit gave me that praise I god i caught this man's hands and i said uncle i'm going to pray with you and i was i was meeting him after a very long time i'm going to pray with you i said can i pray and he said yes please man please pray with me praise i just god. made that short prayer of faith and i left that place and the next day i came to know that he was taken to the hospital they said everything is fine with him there's no problem with him today this man now is 93 years old he is fine ailing he does the garden work he drives everything Now at that moment I could have just said oh I pray for your dad and just walked out from there isn't it mm, I mean, yes the love inside of me moved me to go and say I'm not boasting yes. about myself the holy spirit who did it okay I went there and I said I'm going to pray and you know it was it was amazing that all of them so many of them unbelievers they gathered together around that dad and joined me in that prayer catching you know catching hands together and some of them even hugged me after that because they i could see that grief and that pain that that anxiety that they had and there was like so much of you know they they felt so much at ease when that prayer was said God. yes holy spirit took over at that point in time yes so that's how when when you you know when you go and you see people who are in pain you want to elevate their pain that's the christ inside of you Amen. you know in my own life before i became born again i would never have had the guts to do something mm. like this the uh, and you know i said lord you are so amazing you are so amazing it's only you holy spirit that can do this praise god god yes yes that's how it works the jesus was moved with compassion he loved people that compared him to act in that uh, let's go to matthew 14 14 and it's so beautiful that he is put that power inside us this is the power of his love and his his uh, glory you know so beautiful always remember compassion compels you to action see what it says in matthew 14 14 when he went a show and saw a great throng of people he had compassion pity and deep sympathy for them and cured their sick because jesus had compassion for those people he wanted to cure them he wanted to elevate their pain their sickness praise god thank you praise jesus 
you know when we went to pune um, we had we, we had uh, a session in, in somebody's house and there were a lot of people there who came some of them sick some of them you know some of them some problem and there was this particular lady who had a problem with her leg or her or her, or her back or something and as you're praying over them that person got she got knocked off and the next minute she was manifesting and you know what it took about 40 to 45 minutes to get that spirit out of her Thanks. and Dixon was you know casting out that spirit speaking to the demons 40 to 45 minutes now my my children my son and my daughter this was the last day that we had with them before my daughter had to go go back to the us my 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 sister my my son was continuing to be there in in pune because he's working there now and this was the last day that we could have spent him. Now, in our physical, you know, everything was screaming and saying, now, just let this finish fast and we have to move now from here. But we wanted that job to be done. Mm -hmm. That compassion, you know, wants you to, to set that person free. That person, you want to, to see that person completely set free and move. In fact, that took brought only 45 minutes after that we took that person and we brought that person to their house. Praise God. How does it happen? On your own, it's impossible. No, never. Impossible. Impossible. Never. Yes. You cannot. Because it's your physical portion will be screaming. One side you're hungry. One side you know children are waiting for you. Yes. But you have that compassion in you. Compels you to action. Wow. Now, I'm not saying this to praise myself. I'm just saying how the Holy Spirit works. Praise and the God. Lord wants us to love like Jesus loved. Now, mm. it's not that every time it happens. There are times when I've also failed in my love walk. Very often in the past, I've looked at people. I said, yeah, good. Pray for you. I'll pray for you. And just walked out of you. But when you really love like Jesus loved, your compassion will move you to action. He had compassion for them and cured their sick. Then in Matthew 15, 32, he goes and he feeds the same crowd because they had, they had come there. They were listening to him three days and they had nothing mm. to eat. And Jesus feeds them. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 15, verse 32. Then, then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have pity and sympathy and I'm deeply moved for this crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing at all to eat. And I'm not willing to send them away hungry, lest they faint or become exhausted on the way. So the compassion in Jesus wanted to see them not only spiritually fed, but also physically fed. Praise God. Thank you, Thank Jesus. God. Thank you, he didn't Jesus. want to send them away exhausted. You know, when mm -hmm. you have received the comfort of God, God has comforted you in your most difficult moments. Now it is our turn to go mm -hmm. and be a comfort to those who need to hear the word. To comfort yes. others. The same comfort which we have received. That's what it says in one Corinthian, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. You know, can you put that? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Sister Maria, can you read that? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of sympathy, pity and mercy, and the God who is the source of every comfort, consolation and encouragement. Praise God. Who comforts, consoles and encourages us in every trouble, calamity, and affliction, so that we may also be able to comfort, console, and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble or distress with the comfort, consolation, and encouragement with which we ourselves are comforted, consoled, and encouraged by God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so the you. same comfort which God has given us, he has comforted us through his son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit who's inside of us. 
now we can go and comfort others if we have not experienced god's comfort we will not be able to understand and comfort others it's only because we have received that kind of comfort in our trouble in our distress now we can go and comfort others and remember sometimes these kind of jobs that we are doing loving like jesus loved we don't even get a pat of appreciation or a mm -hmm. pat of on on our backs and saying oh well done good job in fact people will actually will will you know actually condemn make you make fun of you yeah and make fun of you and mock you but when you are loving like jesus loved you don't wait for any kind of encouragement or you don't wait for because who is your encourager who is your consoler the holy spirit christ yes. himself Amen. you don't need encouragement from others or consolation from others Praise God. Your comfort is the Holy Spirit. He is looking at your heart. You just go out there and see Christ in those person, in those people. Love like Jesus loved. Praise God. That's why I said the love language of love goes beyond everything. And if we want to learn this language, just read one Corinthians thirteen every day, and put yourself in that verse. i am patient i am kind i do not keep a record of wrongs i do not return retain uh, return evil for evil but return evil with good as i said it's hard but you can do it only through the holy spirit only the holy spirit can help you to do it praise god thank you jesus thank you, thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. I was just reminded, you know, when you were talking about compassion, where Jesus, those people were working with him. They were listening to the word for three days. They were hungry, but then he was so compassionate. Isn't that what he does to us as well? For all that effort we put in, for that step that we take, you know, in his name, in his, out of our comfort zone, when we take that step. okay today i'm going to listen to the word of god today i'm going to how much does he do in our life my t thing see our testimonies manly look at that if that car had to come what would have your flesh would have gone you you would have been destroyed but because of that love he is so compassionate he knows how to keep us under his protection that word helps us you know and that's it's the same thing that he feeds us every day when we come here now this one hour he has fed us enough because we were sad we were we were upset we were feeling discouraged we were feeling distressed so many things happen in our physical life but with this he fills us with his compassion with his love he feeds us with such a big meal isn't it is god and is god thank you jesus and now when he has fed us it is only right that we go and feed somebody else amen exactly is god. Yes. praise god because that 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 spiritual nourishment that we have received now we want to go and console somebody else who is going through some distress some discomfort and remember everything that we do we are doing it not for that person we are doing it for god mm. you know when we take that approach we will never be discouraged if somebody is you know saying something bad or if somebody is not praising us mm yeah and we will put our best efforts because we know it's not the person we are doing we are, we are serving the lord that's what mm. it says in colossians chapter 3 verse 23 do everything heartily which simply means our out of a heart that is filled with the love of god which we have received when we became born again mm. we see christ in that person we are serving mm. so even if there is a spouse who is very you know irritable or he doesn't treat us well maybe we have children who are very rebellious let's look at see christ in them through the eyes of christ and say lord it is not them it is that satan inside of them get behind me satan i believe that my child is changed i believe that my spouse has changed has been translated 
I am going to look at them with love, with mercy, with kindness, and with compassion. And if you do this, my dear sisters and brothers, you will never fail. You are going to see results. You are going to see victory because you are doing it God's way. Not your way, but God's way. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise yes, God. Sister Maria, I'll close here. Anyone yes. wants to say anything? Have any questions? You know, I had I had a revelation yesterday. I was ministering to someone, and it it was three of us talking, and there was this person, you know, because um, we were talking on that scripture where no weapon uh, is uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay, so he was we were talking about it, and uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, in our personal life, what is the weapon? It is someone else coming against us. Now he was talking about Zachariah when Mother Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And you know how they were talking about uh, the name that they are that they are, uh, going to give John. God had already called, told them the name of the child. But when actually they said John, everyone started coming against them. What did God do? Silenced, put Zachariah on mute. What happened to David when God gave him that wisdom? People, his own brothers came against him, you know. And so, but he still had God. What happened to Joseph? Everywhere there are people coming against, your own people coming against you. So same way, when we go to share the word, it's the own people. It's the people that we face to discourage us. But God is the encourager. God is the one who encourages us, comforts us, come on, pushes us, just wants us to do something because he's got the power inside of us. He's got that Jesus, Holy Spirit inside of us. And, and like I always say, if we don't use it, we lose it. One day we'll be gone. <laughs> is it, isn't it? We'll be gone. And what have we done? Nothing. We had so much put inside of us. God worked so hard for us. But then we'll be gone empty. We are all beautifully gifted. Don't you think, Melanie? We are created with such unique gifts. See, you are so beautiful. You are so gifted with that uh, tongue to preach the word of God. You know, and how many souls are listening to you? What a blessing. What a mighty blessing that is. So each one of us have different uh, gifts. And if we don't know the gifts that we are chosen for, we don't fulfill the purpose. And it's all ended very soon. Maria, but, yeah. what you said, that uh, our own people uh, stand, you know, they come into the way of our, of our uh, work serving the Lord in many ways, no? Yeah. Most, uh, one example I would like to give from the scriptures is Moses and Aaron, you know. When Moses called God, God called Moses, come and do this. He said, I can't speak. I can't do this. He was kept on resisting. So God mm. told, okay, I'll take Aaron with you. But you know, towards the end of the journey, when Aaron was, was the own elder brother, they knew everything from the scratch from the time they brought Israel out of the Egyptians and to the mountains, to the place also. Only mm. when Moses goes up, you know, to take the Ten Commandments, what does Aaron do here? Because he gives the authority to Aaron and goes, take care of the people when I'm away. But what does mm. Aaron do? And people come and tell him, we do not know where this Moses is gone. We need some God. We need some leader. So what he does, he takes the, all the gold and makes a calf out of it. Can you imagine? Mm. Praise God. Idol worship, you know? So yeah. From where the, the, the trouble, the pain they took and came all that while, you know? Still, nothing could change Aaron's attitude. Mm. He failed to understand, and it was this he was the very person whom uh, uh, God gave to Moses to be supportive to him was letting him down here. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Yes, so we are also blessed, you know, we need to somehow get out of our comfort zone and just say, Lord, what do you want us to do? Where can we start? You know, and just, just work to the best we can for the glory of God. 
Praise God. Baba, take the screen off, Baba. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, each one has got a hidden potential, mm. different talents, different abilities. My calling is not somebody else's. Sometimes exactly. we compare ourselves, just we say, no, that person has done so much. I also want to be like that. Yes. But God has put uniqueness in each one of us. Everyone has a unique, special calling. Say, for example, today's readings. Samuel's calling was one. Mm. Andrew and Peter, they had different, they, they were brothers. But yes. Uh, Simon Peter was, you know, was was given the, the the position of being the being the rock, being the you know being the uh, being the founder of the church. But mm -hmm. though Andrew was the one who introduced Simon Peter to Jesus, mm -hmm. into Jesus, yes. So that doesn't mean that Andrew was sidelined. Andrew, I'm, so, I'm sure, had his own calling, has had his own particular uh, like calling. like you said, yeah. uh, uh, Moses and Aaron, Aaron. Uh, Moses had a had a speech difficulty. So Aaron was appointed to actually fill in for Moses to talk for him because Moses had used to stammer. So each one, say Paul and Peter, they had a different calling. Mm. So yes. that way, you know, each one has a own unique, specific assignment and a unique purpose that God has given. And he has been put tremendous potential inside each one of us. It's up to us to unravel and discover Amen. what yes. God has put inside of us. And it's Thank a process. You. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, shall do you want to say a prayer, a prayer my darling? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll do the Thanksgiving prayer. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for this beautiful and wonderful time that we had with you. Yes, Lord. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, listening to you speaking to us, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have poured your love inside of us, your love, your abiding love inside our hearts helps us to love like Jesus did. Jesus, when you walked on this earth, you lit, looked beyond what you saw in the physical, but you looked at the hearts of people. You loved the sinner. You loved those who had experienced grief and distress. You love those who were spiritually hungry, those who were physically hungry. You saw Christ. You saw, you saw, you saw everyone through the eyes of love. Jesus, help us to see you in those whom we encounter in our daily lives. Each day, Lord, teach us to love like you love. Looking beyond what we see in the physical. And going by your abiding spirit, your love inside of us. To love with mercy, kindness and compassion, just as you showed us, O oh Jesus. Today, Lord, as you have spoken through our hearts, we thank you. That during this year, whatever opportunities that you present to us, that you are going to help us. To love like you did, Jesus. And be a blessing in the lives of others. We thank you and we praise you, Father. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Lord. Praise thank God. you so much, Sister Melanie. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you, everybody.